Good morning, everybody. How great it is to see all of you here. And also, I agree, Michael. Thank you, Joe. The music is so beautiful. We have more beautiful music for you to hear this morning. We're actually going to get to sing a Christmas song with Dave Teske today. So please uh, stay with us. And uh, we're so glad to see you again and always. We want to ask you to do something for us. For Christmas Eve, we would love to put together a Christmas Eve slideshow of a Christmas card. This way you can all see each other. Some of you have never met each other, so this would be a great chance to say Merry Christmas and a greetings. I stole this picture of Dan and Sue off of Facebook for an example. Send me one to two photos and a short greeting and we'll make that slideshow for Christmas Eve at 4.30 p.m. You gotta send it to me soon though because if you wait till the last minute, it makes it a lot harder. <laughs> so I look forward to getting those pictures and greetings from all of you this week. Also, this coming Saturday on December 19th, we're gonna gather on Zoom at 10 a.m. and talk about the Spirit of Matthew 25, part two. For those of you who attended the Spirit of Matthew 25 training a while ago, you know this has been coming. We are ready, we're ready, so let's go. We're gonna hold the second part of that meeting. Don't worry, we'll review the first part if you didn't make one of those meetings. Um, so please plan to be there. All that information will be in your weekly update right after the service. I'll send it out to you, okay? So this is the other thing. Matthew 25 calls us to love and serve in Jesus' name, and we're going to start that at Coon Rapids UMC on Sunday, January 10th at 12 noon. So show up this Saturday, keep reading the updates, and um, be a part of everything that God is doing even now. We're going to sing... Let's sing, I know it's not Christmas morning, so what? Let's sing, here is a great song, here we go. fun I could not hear you singing so when we sing later you need to sing louder because I could not hear you that is so much fun let's pray over this time oh God we come because we adore you and we just need to learn more about that about you 
about how you came, how you lived, how you died, how you rose again. We need to learn more about how we can be your people in this world right now, in this space. Through your love, God, teach us, guide us, lead us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Again, so good to see all of you. What a wonderful chance we have to be together just again today. I hope you have a candle because we're going to light our Advent wreath right now with the Stockman family. So, well, a couple of the Stockman family, not all of them. So get your candle. Get your candle ready. Here we go. Hello, Quinn Rapids United Methodist family. We are the Stockmans, Leah, Marie, and Kevin is our videographer. And we are going to be doing the Advent candle lighting ceremony today. And Leah is going to start with the reading of the passage. Love, John 3, 16 to verse 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And now for our prayer. Please bow your heads. Great God of love, the core of your very being is love, and your love extends unbounded to and through all creation because of love. Jesus came to teach us, lead us, and sacrifice himself for us. As we honor the birth, life, death, and resurrection of you, Jesus, may your love be born in us anew. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. I hope you have lit your candle this morning and that the holiness of God is just filling the space you're in no matter where you are. We are connected today. We are together. I want you to notice though, did you notice how many times Leah had to click that lighter to try to get that candle to light? You know, that was recorded in advance because it's we just did it that way and I could have edited out that piece where she tried and tried, but I left it in on purpose, okay? We left it in because sometimes it takes a lot of perseverance. If you think about all the things that we're trying to do right now as a church, as a community of faith, as believers in Jesus, as people, as parents, as brothers and sisters, as siblings in Christ, and all the things we're trying to do right now, you got to keep trying. You have to keep trying. And so it was great to see Leah continue to try. And did you see how lit that little candle was when it worked? Watch this again. Notice how bright it gets. Almost. Watch. There. It's the light that we long for. It's the light that we live for. It's the light that we love. How beautiful is that? This morning we're talking about the love of God. As we've talked so far about peace, hope, and love, I know we've rearranged these a little bit, but we did that to align with a Bible study that's going on right now. This morning we're talking about love. And I can tell you that in my own life, God's love has had to persevere with me. Many times have I forgotten what it means and what it can be and what I'm called to be a part of. I hope that God's love has pursued you. I know that God's love has pursued you and I hope you see it and I hope you understand it. Let's look at this passage again that they read. John 3, 16 through 17. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through 
him. One of the things that I keep reading about during this time is this common theme among others that we as a human race may be more fragile than we thought. Perhaps the meaning of this Christmas will be a little bit different for us in light of everything we've learned. We can't do things the same way as we have in the past. We're missing several traditions. We're not gathering in the building to sing, but I hope you sang in your house. All of these things, in light of all of these changes, maybe God will speak to us in a different way today. Look at what's happening in our world and what we need right now. What we need right now is the love of Jesus what this world needs. I feel a Dionne Warwick song coming on, right? What this world needs is love, sweet love, what the world needs. Anyway, you get the song. <laughs> the truth is the world has always needed love. And there are many times in history when the world was just as, if not more broken than it is now. God knows what is best for us and it is clear that it is love. Love is the image of our creator. It is the energy of our creator. It is the relationship that we need above and below all others with our creator. Jesus is the image of our creator, the energy, the relationship that we need. We learn about God's love by looking at the birth of Jesus, the very act of God to come here as a humble, vulnerable child in almost the most vulnerable way that Jesus could come to this earth, that extravagant love to stretch that far. God's great love says to us, I will come to you in human form. Watch how I do this. I will show you what love is, what it means, so that you personally may live life, but also so that all of you may live new life. Jesus' birth and life, death and resurrection is God's way of saying, watch this. This is how. Try this. When we understand the love of God also through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we begin to understand the impact of love in our own lives and the potential in this world. Look at this passage too. 1 John 4, 9 through 10. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Well, this is a crazy time right now, isn't it? And I think we're learning a lot about love the perseverant love that continues to reach out across the community to stay together. And I'm so thankful for all of you. You have worked so hard to be together. And, and new people have come to see this. The community grows, the kingdom grows, and we grow deeper in love with God and with each other in the name of Jesus. You all have to know that historically, Christianity has always thrived in times of difficulty or trouble, in times of adversity. When things are not as easy, people tend to put forth a different effort. Are you seeing that? When it's not easy to see our family and friends, we work harder to do it. It means more to us. May this Christmas time, this 2020, this Christmas, set us up for another trip around the sun with a new diligence and a new perseverance to love like Jesus. What would happen if this time were a time that could actually build our community in a new way, that could actually energize us for the future with a decline in institutional churches all across? Why can't this season be a divine interruption that helps us to draw deeper, to draw wider, to go further, to pull, to stretch, to grow, and to love extravagantly in new and bright ways. What will bring that passion, that readiness to drive forward, 
is the pure, hot, white love of God, the holiness of God. And that's what comes to this earth in Jesus. So I hope you will go with me. This is a time we can lean in, we can learn, we can grow forward, we can grow stronger. We can do more things for the kingdom of God. Lean in. God's love is calling you. God's love is calling us. And this is what our world needs right now. We're gonna look at some really practical things today. I know some of you are just love practical sermons and so do I, even though I tend to be a contemplative type of person, some of you really like the practical sermons. And so as we seek to bind together, to be stronger, to go forward as a community of faith, I want to say this morning, I want to talk about two things that we can do to make a difference. The first one I want to talk about is learning Jesus. What does it mean to learn Jesus? And then I want to talk about what it means to live Jesus. This to me is the best way to honor Jesus' birth, <laughs> to learn Jesus and to learn to live Jesus. The best way to celebrate Christmas. Think of all the things we can't do. This we can do. And I believe we must do. We need to do. Let's talk about what it means to learn Jesus. I apologize for this glare on my glasses today. Believe it or not, my printer would not print, and so now I have this, and it's just shiny, and I apologize. So I'm a little out of sync because of it. So, so if you'll pray for me that I can kind of not be messed up by my own technology today, it's a little hard for me to figure this out. Let's talk about what it means to learn Jesus. Back to the point here. Learning Jesus understanding the life of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to do that this year. Read past the Christmas story. Read more. Learn the life of Jesus. Read the whole story. There's four Gospels in the Bible that detail Jesus' life. And they're different. Don't be dismayed by that because sometimes those differences help us learn things. This, this text, all these texts are so rich with literal and figurative meaning. Read the whole story. If you're curious about which gospel to start with, you can start with Matthew and move on to Luke, Mark, I'm sorry, move on to Luke and then John, but they're different. Mark's the shortest. So if you're intimidated by reading a whole book of the Bible, Mark is the shortest. Read that one. Matthew adds some additional material, but Mark and Matthew are very similar. Luke adds Another element of material that you'll want to read, but John is that symbolic meaning. John tells you how it ends at the beginning of the way that John tells a story. Learn Jesus. If we're going to follow Jesus, if we're going to be Jesus in our world, we need to learn who Jesus is, what Jesus said, and what Jesus did. So I'm going to encourage you to do that read the whole story. Michael shared in the chat how to find the book of Mark at BibleGateway.com, but there's a whole bunch of them, Bible.org. There's a, a ton of free resources if you don't actually have the book or if you just like reading it online. Read the whole gospel story. Choose one. Do it this year. Learn and then get into a study. Get into a Bible study that helps you understand the cultural context in which Jesus did all of this teaching. Get into a study. You will find, among other things, that Jesus is all about loving. Jesus is all about meeting people where they are. Jesus is all about challenging the systems that marginalize people. Get into a study. There's great resources for these all over online. We have some at the church. We have some Bible studies ongoing. Get into a Bible study. Learn Jesus. Read the whole story and get into a story. For example, one of the things that we bring to the gospel stories is a sense of individualism. Our culture here in the United States, you know this, is very individualistic. We think about ourselves and for ourselves first, usually. We're very much like that. But back in Jesus' day, things were not like that. People were much more connected. They were in the, when they talked about people, they usually were talking about groups of people. They thought of things corporately. 
And so when we know that about the Bible, it gives us a different understanding of even what Jesus meant when Jesus taught about and talked about and lived love. We understand it differently. So I, I want you to watch this. This is a perfect example of something you can do to learn more. This is from the Bible Project, and it is their video on love. So watch this for a few seconds, okay? Here you go. So if you've heard of Jesus, you probably know about one of his famous teachings called the Golden Rule. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. And this, actually, is a restatement of something else that Jesus said, that the meaning of life is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's really beautiful, but what does he mean exactly by the word love? It's an unclear word in English, because you can love your mom and you can love pizza. And if the word love means the same thing in both of those cases, your mom's going to feel real bad. So what did Jesus mean in his language? Well, first of all, this love your neighbor phrase is a quotation from the Hebrew scriptures, where the word for love is ahava. However, the language Jesus spoke and taught in from day to day it was a cousin language of Hebrew, that is Aramaic, in which the word for love is rachma. But then, as Jesus' followers spread his teachings around the world, they translated them into Greek using the word agape. But here's what's fascinating. The earliest followers of Jesus who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek, they didn't learn the meaning of agape by looking it up in ancient dictionaries. Rather, they looked to the teachings of Jesus and the story of his life to redefine their very concept of love. So one time, Jesus was asked about the most important command in the Jewish scriptures. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. And so this makes it clear that for Jesus, agape love is not primarily a feeling for someone else that happens to you, like our phrase, I fell in love. For Jesus, love is action. It's the choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well-being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them, expecting nothing nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy embracing love imitates the very character of God himself. Now we wouldn't be talking about Jesus still today if he had only said things like love your enemy. This is how he actually lived. Jesus was constantly helping and serving the people around him in very practical and tangible ways. And he consistently moved towards poor and hurting people who couldn't benefit him in return. He showed love for the forgotten ones, the people who usually fall through the cracks. And when Jesus eventually marched into Jerusalem, he made himself an enemy of the leaders of his people by accusing them of hypocrisy and corruption. But then instead of attacking his enemies to overthrow them, he allowed them to kill him. Jesus died for the selfishness and corruption of his enemies because he loved them. After Easter morning, Jesus and then his followers claimed that it was the power of God's love for the world that was revealed in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. As the Apostle Paul put it, God demonstrated his own agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. And for John, then, this leads naturally to the conclusion, beloved ones, if that's how God has loved us, then we ought to show love for one another. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love. What do you think of that video? 
Isn't it interesting to think about it that way, that our individualistic views were not a part of what Jesus was teaching? Loving others was no different than loving God or loving self. It's all connected. It's all connected. Look at this beautiful passage here. When we learn to live Jesus, 1 John 3, 16 through 18. Listen to this. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech but with actions and in truth. Loving Jesus, learning Jesus, leans right into living Jesus. Living out what Jesus said and did and taught. Living Jesus in new ways, in ways that were inspired every time by the Holy Spirit. This also connects to what we talk about all the time with Matthew 25. The Matthew 25 story where Jesus talks about how the Son of Man comes in his glory, and then, and then there's this king, and they sort the sheep and the goats. And Jesus says to them, I tell you the truth, or, I'm sorry, the king says, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Loving people in Jesus' name is always connected to loving God. When we learn Jesus, we live Jesus. But I would like to say that when we live Jesus, we learn Jesus. I'm not sure one is before the other. I think we are all so connected in this way. Living Jesus and learning Jesus is how we learn what love is and what love can become. I want you to think about these two things, learning Jesus and living Jesus. We can do these things on our own, but the impact of a team is so much greater. If you're a part of a team that's learning Jesus, great, dig in. If you're a part of a team that's living Jesus, dig in. If you're not, join us. We're striving to learn to love like Jesus and learn to live like Jesus in all of this world. And I believe to honor Jesus' birth and life and death and resurrection, this disrupted season, these may be the best things we can do to strengthen the kingdom of God, even right now in this season of difficulty. It's time to rise up. But there's something at the core of this that I think we have to talk about a little further. We need to let Jesus. Listen to these words from Romans 5, 8 through 10. But, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Let Jesus, the blood of Christ, let Jesus be a part of your life. Because at the core of all of this, we believe that God is a sentient being that God is with us, close, not distant. That God is ready to engage with us at all times. That the Holy Spirit is a trainer, a teacher, a leader, a guide, a comfort to us. We believe that this sentient being wants to be a part of our lives in a real and relational way. Letting Jesus listen to this passage from 1 John 4.10. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. This is really important for you to capture here, for me to capture, that God loved us before. God loved us first. That's why we learn Jesus. 
That's why we live Jesus, because we have been loved, even in our lostness and our brokenness. I want you to hear these words from Susie Larson. Susie Larson writes some incredibly beautiful things. Follow her on Facebook. I actually had the honor of getting to know her brother quite well at a previous church I served. Anyway, here's Susie's words. Listen, and it's based on 1 John 4.10. Before you were even born, God loved you first. Before you knew you were capable of sin, God sent his only son to save you, forgive you, and totally redeem your story. Before you knew how others might hurt or betray you, God promised to stay by your side. Before you knew that you'd need divine direction during critical times in your life, God honored your story and spoke peace to your soul so you'd know which way to go. Before you'd grasp the storms you would have to endure, God offered his Holy Spirit to guard and guide, comfort and provide. When you decided to strive for appearance sake, God watched and waited and loved you through it. When you got too big for your britches and thought too highly of yourself, God gently and lovingly showed you what's true. When you tripped up and fell down and friends scattered, God stayed close and loved you back to wholeness again. God loves you. He thinks about you. God intervenes on your behalf. And God loves what he's forming in you. God will never look away or forget about you God will never lose your address. God will never be surprised by you. God knew who he was getting when he got you, when he made you. He absolutely, unequivocally loved you first. I love how Joseph Excel speaks of this, the biblical il illustrator on his commentary in 1 John. 410. This was written in 1905. He writes, The unregenerate heart is, as to love, a broken cistern which can hold no water. Living Jesus. Learning Jesus. Letting Jesus within. I think this year this could be the way to honor Jesus' birth, by digging in to learn, by going out to live it out, and by letting Jesus change you from within, letting Jesus be a part of your life in a very real way. So I encourage you, let's go get it. Let's learn Jesus and let's live Jesus. We're ready. Matthew 25 is going to go in January. If you want to learn more about that, then read that weekly update. It'll come to you right after the service. Let's get at it together. Let's work on these things. Let's grow. Because even in difficult times, wow, the times in which Jesus actually was born, the Spirit of God thrives. Let's dig in and get at it. That's my prayer for us today. Let me pray over you. Gracious and holy God, you loved us before. You love us during, and you love us anyway. Oh God, we're comfortable with learning about you and living in the way you taught, but sometimes we're afraid to actually connect with you. So God, I ask that you meet us by your presence, by your spirit, where we are right now, that we'll be willing to connect with the warmth and love and mercy and grace and guidance that you are in a very real and deepening relationship. A relationship that we can't imagine living without. God, you are so good to us and your love is deeper, wider, broader, brighter, and more perseverant than anything we will ever encounter. Thank you, God, 
for coming to this earth to walk among us, to show us what it means to love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's sing in closing today. But I really want to encourage you. This is a time that we really can thrive. Hang on to those things when things seem different for you right now. There's a new day coming, and it's going to be good. Let's sing together. today and this week with the peace and the presence and the joy and the hope and the love of God no matter what 
you're enduring no matter what's happening around you. And may God use this time to deepen our faith as we learn Jesus, as we live Jesus, and as we let Jesus. Many blessings to all of you. I hope you're okay and well. Please keep turning in your prayer concerns. We are praying for you. I am praying for you. So look forward to seeing you again. Let's get at it. We're ready to go forward. Much love to all of you and many blessings. And may it be so. Thank you.